David Glass, the mayor of Petaluma, and with me is John Crowley, the proprietor at the Aquas Cafe at 2nd and 8th Street. And John, we're at a pocket park that Rebuilding Together put together for the city a few years ago. This is a wonderful amenity, amenity to be right here on the river. Yes, yeah, just down the road. It's at the end of 8th Street. Uh, Aquas Cafe is on the corner of 2nd and 8th. So just take Aquas Cafe and come right down to the river. And it's a really, really nice. I hope we get a couple of shots later of this, what they did. I remember it used to be a pretty nasty hangout kind of place you really wouldn't want to hang out during the day or during the night and now they've just created a beautiful two benches trees and it's just a really nice place to hang out beside the river so congratulations to uh, Jane Hamilton I think put it together with rebuilding Petaluma and it all happened just in one day that is so yes. great when an eyesore becomes an amenity overnight <laughs> absolutely and they really certainly turned this place around well, speaking of turning this place around, we've got a bunch of uh, boats that are working their way up the river this afternoon, and they're all coming into uh, the Turning Basin in historic downtown Petaluma. I'm not aware of an organized event today. Maybe this is just a regular occurrence of a boat club that has decided to visit our fair city. Well, I can't think of a better city to visit, actually. I mean, it really is great for for boats and uh, owners of these. Some of these yachts are pretty big, but some of them are fair-sized. Maybe I could own one one of these days, years. We'll see. <laughs> All right, so uh, when your ship comes in, let me know because yes, I want to go for a ride. Uh, now, we had uh, just recently here an event on the river where it was the uh, rowing competitions that took place. And it was out there early Sunday morning, and it was really exciting because I got a chance to see the river in a way that I hadn't really seen it before. Yeah, I've yeah. seen it rage. I've seen it flood <laughs> yes, when it's our enemy, but it was yeah. just pristine, and it was actually low tide. And you were able to enjoy... Uh, the water, the rowing, and in fact, I understand that you can go water skiing for miles and miles on a straight stretch. I think you can. Further down, you can go water skiing. Around here, I think it's really just the uh, the pedal. There's quite a few clubs. There's the uh, Outrigger Canoe, that's the Hawaiian style. There's a few of them, and of course, the... Um, was the rowing club is is huge here in Petaluma? Really well, it was a rowing club event because okay. they had the seniors, Great. the master seniors, the collegiate teams, high school teams, and it was interesting to watch, especially when they had the team of eight rowers with one, you know, one guide. Were you one of them? I was not a did rower. You, did, no. Did you I, get a chance? Did you get a chance to go rowing? Are you kidding? <laughs> no, I sat in a power boat. We, oh, I see. we okay. passed the rowers. It was great. Drinking a hot cup of coffee while they were breaking the ice, I'm sure. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, no, it was really, really good to watch. And, in fact, um, it was interesting because you get those eight rowers and you see them row in sync or the tandems, the two. One group was so in sync that they looked like one wow, and thought it was yeah. a solo. And then you yeah. see that it's actually two people and they're able to row the, uh, together in sync so well. Yeah. And I think they probably won the event. Yeah. yeah, they really have. It's, it's amazing the amount of things that happen here in the Petaluma River. It's quite a gem and quite a, an asset to Petaluma. And uh, people are starting to realize that now and get out in the water. It's amazing. Amazing things that are happening here. They're, um, they're building a, uh, a floating, sh um, maybe you can remind me of the name of it, a floating uh, water house for um, up in the Turning Basin for housing all the boats and uh, renting do you know about that well yeah it's um it, well okay so if i get this right from the tour that i took uh this weekend it's a facility that is a vision right now that would be about a 15,000 square foot facility okay. so that it would house uh, the boating, boating amenities that you need right. to really turn it into a recreation center, yeah. which would feed into the tourism here oh, yeah. in the county. So okay. it's a vision. It hasn't been accomplished yet but, yeah. but it you know, will. hey yeah. look at the East Washington <laughs> Freeway interchange is done so sometimes visions become <laughs> yeah, a reality yeah I'm sure a lot of people are happy about that well except for the people that have been marooned they're kind of you know like ships run aground you've got cars that run in danger of running ground because they still want to turn left to uh -oh. go right it's habit you <laughs> really? know what I mean <laughs> habits are difficult to break they really are <laughs> so. I'd hope that hasn't really happened uh, that was tongue-in-cheek but yeah, uh, I wouldn't be surprised you yeah, know yeah. You, have you ever been where you go going somewhere and you're uh, on autopilot sure. and you'll kind of take off and go somewhere that you usually go, but not where you intended to go Absolutely. this time. They, those things can be dangerous. Can be okay, dangerous. So don't turn left to go right anymore. <laughs> Have you heard the news? Something got done in the way of traffic relief. It's the East Washington Freeway interchange improvement. So no longer do you have to turn left to go right if you're headed north. All right. Yeah. And speaking of heading north, uh, there's going to be a lot of people trying to get up north uh, because the uh, casino is coming to Roner Park, and that's scheduled for an opening of November 5th. And I know that all over the region, people are trying to make plans of how to handle the influx of people, traffic, and whatnot. Are you, are you going for the opening? 
I probably will because I think I need to be aware of what is happening. But yeah, um, I'm gonna try and stay away from yeah. uh, casinos. It's uh, I think it's it's a it's a pity really that we have to build things like that. I really you know I'm holding a piece of paper in my hand. Is is Petaluma going to be next in line for a casino? I hope not. I hope we can do everything possible to stop it. Well, you see, I hope not too. Yeah. And then as mayor, I've got to deal with what is reality. I'm sure you do. Yeah. And so uh, to me. Yeah. The role that I have in the Argus Courier wrote an editorial about it a lot, while ago that it no longer really behooved Petaluma to uh, do anything other than find paths of communication. I've done that. I've talked to Greg Saris three yeah. times. Now, I hadn't talked to him until recently, but I have talked to him a couple of times because we have to have a channel of communication that if indeed we get some negative impacts, perhaps they can be a partner with helping us remedy those negative impacts. And that is as I see my role. And if people go back and look at the history, I did everything that I felt was possible to try to cre create a reality that did not include a casino anywhere in Sonoma yeah, County. Yeah. So I'm concerned to the south of Petaluma. To the north of Petaluma, I think it more you have to turn the page and look at what is happening yeah. and understand that that's happening. I'm going to have a path of communication to them because I think that that's the responsibility of my position. And I certainly understand where you are yeah. and I understand why that is the way <laughs> you feel. And uh, uh, I understand it. Well, we can, you know, it's, it's interesting, jurisdiction outside of Petaluma city limits, we, we don't seem to have a lot of uh, jurisdiction. I mean, we've got the, the Dutra thing that still could be happening that will affect Petaluma quite considerably. And that is on an appeal to um, a, a judge, and hopefully we'll prevail on that appeal. That is a, on the fringe of Petaluma. Yeah. And so that is something that is within our sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. In my mind, that gives us, this is my mind, yeah. gives me a little bit more comfort knowing that we can go out there and participate in lawsuits with that because yeah. of the standpoint that we definitely have standing there. Yeah. It's in our jurisdictional area of influence, sphere of influence, marketing area, vision. It's uh, identified differently in the general plan for the county. It's identified differently in the vision of the general plan of the city of Petaluma. Yeah. I definitely think there's some good things happening, a lot of good things happening in Petaluma. We just ran into Tyler Young from the, the Petaluma Guild, who was telling us about the new Petaluma logo. And it was kind of similar, similar to this one. I don't have a t-shirt for the new one. But there definitely seems to be a sense that Petaluma is uh, is doing a lot of good things. Uh, businesses are, are coming in. Um, I know people are moving to Petaluma. People are really in, uh, have understood, I think, what's happening in Petaluma with the community building, with uh, just a, a good kind of uh, quality of life that you can have here. There is. It's the ge geographic proximity to uh, San Francisco and the neighbor of Marin County. And just in the background as we watch the boats go up the stream. I mean, that's just people coming to town because they want to be here. What a novel concept. People want to be here. And, and they're not impacted on the traffic on Highway 101 one bit. They didn't move any slower than the traffic on 101, by the way. Uh, they just enjoyed the journey. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's a nice way to travel. And we've got really one of the travel on one of the gems of Petaluma. You know, I used to commute that 101 corridor a lot, and so often I would avoid it and I'd go the back way. Oh, it might have taken a little bit longer, but it was so much more an enjoyable experience. You ended up a little more sane, I imagine. It would drive you crazy. Well, maybe it did. I don't know. Maybe it was too late by the time I started going the back ways. But uh, it's funny because if you took people and drove them from, say, San Francisco to our home in Petaluma and you drove 101, they had a completely different impression of the area than if you got off the freeway and went the back way up by the cheese factory yeah. and came in the back yeah. way. Yeah. And and they would say, my gosh, you live out in the country, as, <laughs> as opposed to, uh, you know, especially if they see an asphalt plant at the gateway well, to Petaluma. None of the, the Petaluma entrances are particularly beautiful uh, from the freeway. You always kind of think, I'm surprised people get off the freeway, to be quite honest, because looking at the entrances, uh, one's, one's worse than the next one. I'm not sure. I, I know the building now, and they're probably going to upgrade it and hopefully make it look decent, but uh, it's been an eyesore for quite a while. You know, one thing that I looked at, um, I was uh, on a trip, and we were in Quebec. And in Quebec, they have walled buildings that don't have uh, windows on them, and they paint murals all the way on the building, and they yeah. create a look. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, with the... Okay, let's, let's face it, with the Regency project that was supposed to have trees that in the end were removed because of the constraints for the freeway and safety issues on the expansion of the freeway, mm -hmm. and the wall of trees disappeared. Yeah. What would happen if we painted a wall of trees on That's the back of the absolutely. Regency shopping center? There, there are some amazing murals here in town. Um, 
I think, what was his name? Steve Del Major did a really nice one on Washington and Petaluma Boulevard. Let's have those things. They add, they bring things to Petaluma. They bring things to the city. They bring things to the community. Uh, I'd be all for painting a bunch of trees on it, please. Well, it won't cure greenhouse gas emissions. <laughs> I get true. it. So save your time calling me and telling me that. But it, you would be surprised how pretty it looks up in Quebec. Yeah. And then in Halifax, Nova Scotia, oh. what I saw, and they were losing trees there. And they had an artist in the community that made wood carvings out of the tree stumps and turned. They had to take the trees down to the stump, but there was enough there to do wood carvings oh, left. Pretty. And how interesting it yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's something something that creates something to, to look at and uh, experience and other other than just kind of a blank wall who okay, wants so those wall? are things that are going on around the not even the country around the continent all right yeah. and uh, th th it makes those areas attractive we've got a lot that makes Petaluma attractive right here and let's talk about some of the events that are going on because this community it is amazing. I mean, I was looking back at my calendar of things that I've gone to in the last month, and I haven't gone to all of them. But my gosh, you've got to have, as a full-time job, just you're going to be out there in the community and just go to one event after another if you attend them all. It's amazing. Absolutely. It really is. You, every, every, every day you kind of have to, unfortunately, choose between one or the other because there really is so much going on, so much good stuff going on. Really. You know what I've tried to do is I've tried to choose things that I haven't been to before. Sure. Yeah. And so, okay, so the things that I've been to, they're already supported. They're going to sell out. They send me these things. Hurry, send in your money, buy your ticket. We're going to sell out. And I go, good, yeah. you'll sell out. That means I don't have to support that one. Not that I don't want to, but I can only be so many places at once. And actually, this wallet is not an infinite supply. It's just as big as it is. So that's it. So if you're going to sell out anyway, I'm glad. But uh, the ones that are new and are starting up and they're so plentiful out there, um, the uh, events that are going to take place all month long with the uh, Day of the Dead celebrations that will be going on. Tell that's, us about those. That's exactly it. That starts actually, well, it's already started. Uh, it's pretty much the whole month. I've got the, the poster here, so I'm going to hold that up so that you can see that. But it's uh, one of the things that I'm particularly very interested in is uh, this Saturday, uh, you probably will be broadcasting, I'm not sure when, but this Saturday we have the Taste of Mexico, the mole competition. And uh, that is uh, it, delicious. It's a, it's a it's an it's an excellent sauce that you have over chicken, uh, made out of uh, a whole bunch of things. Uh, one of the ingredients is chocolate, chocolate and savory chocolate and chili. It's a really really in interesting and, and distinct taste. Okay, uh, so this one's gonna sell out, yes. but I'm gonna go anyway because <laughs> oh, these go. these are calories that are tax deductible. <laughs> they don't count. I can say the heck with that diet. So I'll be a little fatter. Well, a lot of the a lot of the events. Uh, no, you're not. You're gonna lose weight on this. Don't worry. Um, the Dia de los Muertos uh, is a lot of the celebrations are around the Petaluma Art Center, a uh, wonderful place uh, right beside the train station. Actually, we just had our Petaluma Palooza, a really successful big community event there. Um, but the Dia de los Muertos, there's a couple of things going on. As I mentioned, the mole competition. I don't actually have a list of the events, but you can go to PetalumaArtsCenter.org. And they have probably an event every day. It's one of the most uh, uh, prolific festivals we have here in Petaluma, and it's quite amazing. There's something, as I say, every day. So go to PetalumaArtsCenter.org and find out what's going on. It goes on till November 3rd. Okay, so what else is going on in town? Well, we've got the downtown. Okay, coming up to Halloween, of course. You dress up? Uh, I don't have to. Yeah. People, you know, they look at me and they go, you're a natural year-round. Okay. Don't change anything. You scare plenty of people as it is. Well, no, not at all. No, I, no, seriously. Anyway, I want to tell people about the Petaluma, the downtown Petaluma's trick-or-treat trail. That's for uh, a lot of the stores. I'll just hold this one up again so you can see it. Uh, a lot of the stores downtown uh, just provide little treats for all the kids. And uh, parents and kids all dress up on the afternoon of the... 31st, Thursday the 31st, and uh, just go around trick-or-treating. Yeah, I got a Bill Clinton mask. That's what I usually wear. And it's amazing to see things that transgress for President Clinton, because when I first wore that mask, the comments were very negative. And now when I wear that mask, people say, oh, yeah, bring back the good old days. Oh, God, <laughs> so he's yeah. becoming more and more popular yes. as people see more and more dysfunction. And they're thinking, how was it that this guy was able to do it with a Congress that wanted to impeach him? He still got things done. Done. Love him or hate him, he did get things done. The government yeah. shut down, but only briefly. And uh, 
Anyway, the Visitor Center remains open in Petaluma, even if the United States government doesn't. All right, so what else is going I, on, I John? I can't get over the government shutdown. It's incredible. <laughs> You're I mean, in Ireland. I, I'm in Ireland. I, I, I spent a lot of time in France and Germany, lived in Germany for eight years. And I just, I mean, we just scratch our heads and kind of, what's going on? I mean, can't they just, I mean, they're like a bunch of kids. They really are just a bunch of kids uh, just trying to create havoc and, and point fingers at each other and... Anyway, I, I better not say No, that. go on, go on. See, it's not just me. All right, we're with Mad Dog Crawley here, and we're on the Petaluma River. Now yes, back to are. the peace and tranquil and qualm of low tide. Yes, okay. All right, peace and calm. Okay, we've got the uh, the next item we have is the... Are we going to broadcast by the 11th? Probably will just about, won't we? We, uh, we won't be able to get that on probably, but okay, for well, next year, what is going the, on? It's the Petaluma International Annual... Film Festival. Okay, so this year is the fifth annual. You missed it. Yeah. Next year will be the sixth annual. Put it on your calendar. <laughs> so what's next? <laughs> no, I've been there actually. A couple of things. Um, a, lot of people, a lot of local people are gathering to go down to um, to protest. Uh, when is this? It's coming up uh, in a couple of weeks' time. About Fukushima. About we live on the coast of uh, the Pacific, and people are actually getting worried about what is happening over in Japan. Uh, with regard to the Fukushima nuclear power station and all the the um, radioactive material that is just coming into the water, and we're not quite sure. We just I think people want answers. You know, it's interesting to say if you rolled back the clock, we've had a lot of fun here today, but if you rolled back the clock uh, about 40 years ago, it was Bill Cordon and a few others that led the uh, resistance to a nuclear power plant on our coast here in Sonoma County. And it's the same Bill Cordon that uh, one of the projects that he's worked on for so long is opening up Lamferty Ranch. It's the public's property and giving the public an opportunity to access their own property and enjoy a different type of beauty right here in Sonoma County. Yeah, it's a, the Sonoma Coastal Commission, yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what's happening with Laf Lafferty at the moment. Um, I know when I moved to Petaluma 20 years ago, there was a lot of stuff going on. Uh, what's happening now? Well, the most interesting shift here seems to be the attitude of the editorials in the newspapers because the newspapers that were combative about uh, Lafferty in the past, uh, basically thinking that it was um, perhaps not a worthy expenditure of public funds to try to allow the public to walk on the public's property, now are in support. Good. And uh, it's good and bad because we need to put pressure on Supervisor David Rabbit to represent the interests of his South County district and make sure because he's chairman of the Board of Supervisors and then also they tend to follow the lead of the supervisor from the district in which uh, an issue arises, which in effect gives that one supervisor veto power over whether something happens or not and since you asked so in order for this to be opened up it would appear the politics at play would be better served if the county joined the city and the volunteers in name on a lawsuit to have standing and it would allow the um, uh, situation to uh, uh, move forward in a manner that would give an opportunity a best chance opportunity to open up that park for the public. I don't know whether that's going to happen or not. I hope that it is. Yeah, um, Mike Healy and I have joint uh, signed a letter to Supervisor Rabbit asking that he do that. My take on it is if, you know, Right now, Lafferty is in the 2nd Supervisorial District, but those boundary lines will come and go and shift through time as, as voting uh, households yeah, shift and change. move, yeah, because that's how, yeah. how they get redrawn. Yeah. So while Lafferty today is in David Rabbit's district uh, that he represents, because it's not truly his district, it belongs to the voters. Novel concept, all right? So the district that David Rabbit sits in uh, so does Lafferty at this particular time. But Lafferty at some other time could have a line drawn that would be in some other district. Ah. The property itself belongs to the people of Petaluma, yeah. but the access to the beauty of it all should be open up to all of the people that come and visit. We're a tourist county. Yeah. And let's understand that this is a tourist mm -hmm. attraction yeah. that could and should be opened up to the public and give the public access to their property and yeah. the right to walk it. We can pretty much see it from here, can't we? I mean, I don't know whether... 
I, I, I think it's over. Yeah. Over that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah you can see it. If I could guide the camera, and I can't. <laughs> okay. uh, so it's going to be to the right of the towers yeah. of the industrial development and halfway up the hill, yeah. and you would find Lafferty Ranch. And from up there, you have majestic views yeah. uh, of the ocean and all the way out uh, looking to the east. It, it is incredible. Yeah. It okay. Is, it's a bit I, vigorous on the walk because I've walked it one time years ago. So it's a bit vigorous. But why should you have to drive to Yosemite to see oh. what you could see? Right here, four we've miles out of incredible town. Incredible stuff. Right here in Petaluma, we've got some in Sonoma County, Southern Sonoma County. We've got some incredible things to see, and out, out towards Marin as well, out towards uh, towards the Pacific Ocean. Just amazing things that people travel from Europe to come and see, and we're sitting right in the middle of it. It's it's funny. It's uh, I always kind of think of all the uh, the Parisians that never go up the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. We uh, we spend a lot of t our time going far distances, as you say, out to Yosemite, and we could we've got it right here in our backyard. And this is four miles outside the city limits, and the property is owned by the people of Petaluma. And it is spectacular property. So uh, anyway, some of the anyway, other things that yeah. are coming up, we're, we're looking toward the Christmas season in the downtown area, and there's just going to be a tremendous celebration <laughs> here. And Santa Claus coming into town on a boat now. That, that is the best thing of all about Petaluma is they managed to take traditional holidays, maintain the flavor spirit of the traditional holiday, and then... I don't want to say sell it, but, but present it. That, that probably is the right way to say it, is that they present it in a way that is pleasing to all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Have you been Santa Claus? I have not been Santa who, Claus. Who usually does Santa Claus? Well, I know who used to do Santa Claus. I don't know if he still does, but I'm not going to say because oh, okay. he's up in the North Pole and Mrs. Claus might kick me in the shins. But I shouldn't have mentioned anything at all. So what's your favorite thing? That, that's that's uh, one of the favorite things as well. Um, and the, uh, the trick-or-treat thing, that's one of my favorite things too. Yeah. Well, I, I love the I love the trick or treat. Got a, got a well, the the boat the the boat parade, the yes, lights. Absolutely. See that yeah. to me is yeah. just it's yeah. it's spectacular and it brings ten thousand people to downtown mm -hmm. Petaluma, mm -hmm. and I got to think that they're in a good mood and they're in a good spirit, and I got to think that it's not only enjoyable, it's profitable for all of the downtown. I think yeah, that's the downtown association organizes that um, one of those one of those little organizations that does an awful lot and doesn't get a lot of thanks, but. <laughs> Well, you thank them. No, I did. I did. I know. But a lot of people don't know who does it. Okay, so. But, uh, they, they, uh, I just want to put a word out to them. They, do, they really do a great job. I tell you what, we're going to have Marie McCusker on the program here, and we will okay. go into, yeah. Uh, right. And, and so we will try to get that word out because uh, we do need to support our downtown. There's been a lot of development in this community that has moved some of the focus away from the downtown on the short term. But in the end, people know where their friends are, and they tend to come back and revisit what has made them feel good about a community. Yeah. And so whether it's the people, look at the, the people that came up this river on a boat. Sure. They're not Target yeah. shoppers. Nothing against yeah. Target. Uh, you know, Ricardo Blanco, yeah. who manages Target, won't mind that at all. Yeah. They may stop at the Target for some reason, but they didn't ride their boat all the way up this waterway <laughs> not to, go to come. No. Not to go and see Target. No. They came for the downtown. Absolutely. Yeah, the the the, uh, the restaurants, the uh, the stores, the uh, antiques, the uh, just the people. Actually, I think that's why people come to Petaluma. So the people. I think that's right. And so we want to thank you, John. Anything else you want to add to Just one thing. I do want to make sure that uh, everybody knows about we are uh, hosting a uh, mixer gathering called Build. So if you know anybody who's involved in building anything. From well, some people that were really built. Does that count? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe. <laughs> oh, but if you're involved in, you know, from uh, skyscrapers to garden sheds, if you're an architect or a plumber or whatever, the whole idea is that... Uh, Communities function a lot better when the people are connected. Okay, so when is that? And that is next Tuesday. I think you're probably just going to be in time for that. That's Tuesday the 15th of October. It's at Aquas Cafe. starts at 7 p.m. Um, what it is about is about finding out who else is in your community who's in the same business as you. Just so that you can refer each other, help each other. And Undermine each other? No, I'm kidding. Uh, not at all. No, no, no. I, That's because of politics. I, uh, you see? You know, in politics, yes, who's in the same business? Who's going after the same office? How do I get to that person? Got to stop. Got to stop. Got to stop that man or he'll stop me. No. <laughs> no, this is more cooperative than that, really. No, it's all about, uh, it's it's cooperative. It's it's funny. <laughs> Maybe right. we should have a mixture for politicians. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? We, we have that. It's called Every Other Monday. So... <laughs> Anyway, John, thank you so well, thank much. You. It's good to see you I again. I like the change. It's a, it's a nice, uh, we're just down from the cafe. It's 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 daytime. Yeah. And uh, I like the idea of, of chop and change a little All bit. All right, we'll do that more. All right. All right. <laughs> it's John Crowley from the Aquas Cafe. I hope you don't mind the silliness. I have to have a little bit of fun here. Thank you, John. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, good to talk to you. I'm David Glass, Mayor of Petaluma, and we'll be back with more in a moment.
Life is such a breezy game. I love all kinds of weather, long as we're together. I love to hear you say my name.